Right, let's talk new signings. Well, I actually know for a fact one of our players got a DM from a club in Saudi Arabia. Weren't you in Saudi last month? It annoys me when people think sometimes that we just let players go, like we don't want them to go. All right, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another Hashtag United video. It's a very popular video. We make this every single year. It's an important video. It is the squad update video. I'm joined by the first team manager, of course, Jay Devro. over five years in the job now. He's still loving it. Look at that smile. He's absolutely loving life here at the Tags. Still got the same hair? Same, same haircut. I haven't. I've got a whole brand new haircut. Well, it's not about me today. All right, show off. It's about the squad. Right. So, listen, before we get into this, let's, let's talk about the, the thing that's always the same every year. This is how the squad's looking as we stand right now at this point in time. We always wait to the end of, or close to the end of preseason to put this out because there's a lot of movement. But the movement doesn't necessarily stop even today because there is no transfer window, is there? We can do things, things could be happening right now around that's us. Right. Yeah, that's right. And and in this last week, we've got a week, haven't we, until we, we go and you, you get a lot of movement in that last week you tend to find at our level because they largely contracts are not signed. There's registrations. Other teams are finalizing their squads. Players become available. Players, you know, uh, decide to move. We've seen it. We've seen it already at our level and I'm sure we'll continue to see it over the next week and then probably the, the first few weeks of the season. So exactly. yeah, we, we always say as, as, as it is now, but subject to change yeah. as always. That's right. So in this video, we're going to tell you who's still at the club, who's left the club that you would have seen play for us last season, who's come in as a new face. Uh, also, those of you that want to know more about the women's team as well, we are going to do a women's update. Uh, it's going to go on the Extra channel. We're going to have much more women's content coming at you this year. So make sure you subscribe to the Extra channel if you haven't already. And yeah, that will be there with Jason Stevens, obviously the women's team manager. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel too, so you get all that good hashtag United content first up. Right, kits. Uh, you obviously see I'm wearing an old school Adidas hashtag polo. This was actually what I used to wear regularly in the 2018-19 uh, and 2019-20 season. But the reason I haven't gone with the new look stuff yet from Adidas is that it hasn't arrived yet. It's coming soon. It obviously includes the kits as well, the new home kit, the new away kit. You haven't even seen the away kit yet. It's going to come at you. So make sure, again, you're subscribed, you're following on social media, you get those notifications and get yourself some kits as well. The links will be in the description when they're available, not in this video, but future videos. Pre-season, Devs, let's talk about it. It's over now. We've played our last game. We've played 10 games, double figures once again in pre-season. Seven wins, three losses. I mean, it's a positive record, but how much do you care about that, really? Not a lot. It's better than three losses and seven wins, though, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'd be. I'd, no I'd way. Be it's the same thing. <laughs> it's better than three wins, wins and, and seven, seven losses. losses. That's what I meant. Yeah, I'd be lying. Off, I think if I said that I'd be okay if we had only won three and, and, and lost seven. But do you know how good your preseason's been? Probably not until you you're, you're into your season. Yeah. Um So I think it's been it's been good preparation for us. We like you know we've. The last couple of years, we've had a lot of games. We've been we've gone game heavy because I think we, we want to give as much opportunity as possible for people to get minutes into their leg their legs. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, I think it was a great. Happy, sorry, I was say it's a great example of preseason coming down uh, to see us beat Worthing, which is the highest level opposition we've ever beaten. Um, obviously friendly, but yeah, national league opposition, good national league opposition, and in the game after lose to White Ensign. Now no different players and squads were used, but it just shows you can't get too high from the highs and too low from the lows, even in the league, let alone the preseason. Yeah, it's um preseason's always a mixed bag. You don't know what kind of side the opposition have put out. You obviously you, you experiment in yourselves. Uh there's not too much to be read into it and certainly shouldn't be getting too down at getting beat by a white enzyme or, or too high by beating you know a team like Worthing. I did so. enjoy beating Worthing though, because I think it was actually very I mean, again it was a good performance. You know, you can win those games and not necessarily come away thinking you played amazing, but I was really impressed by what our boys did. Um, but equally, they're a really good example because they've won their opening. They've started their league season this weekend and, yeah. they, and they won. Okay. So, you know, and I know they had lost so a couple we're gonna of win their the pre-season games. <laughs> um, <laughs> not this year. <laughs> not this year, it's not possible. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I take your point. Um, okay, well, we've got our first game coming up in, as we're recording this, six days' time, five days' time. Um, we've actually got quite a tough start. We'll talk about that later. Let's talk about the players first. Some of you have been asking if anyone's on contracts. We've announced in the past when people have signed contracts. We are going to do that again in the future, not in this video, but we have had some players sign some contracts, which is great. 
We're going to work through the team in positional uh, style, starting with the goalkeepers. So we finished last year with one goalkeeper, which was James Fitt, one senior goalkeeper, yeah. we should say. Uh, obviously, Pagey went, uh, moved on sort of mid, mid-season last year. Uh, and James Philp is a league winner and he's staying. That's good yep. news. Yep, Philps is staying. Um, we were quite blessed last year for long periods. We had two two goalkeepers, uh, you know, really good calibre goalkeepers that were pushing each other. Obviously, Pagey moved on for understandable reasons, um, but we've not uh, not quite been able to replace that situation this, this pre-season um, in terms of having, you know, two... Uh, if you like first choice yeah. keepers, uh, but that's quite common at this level, uh, and it's not something we're you know we're afraid of or scared of. Um, we're at Philpsy, and we, but we've had um, young Fletch, yes, who's only not long turned seventeen, um, and that's providing an opportunity for him to get some real valuable experience and minutes uh, in and around the first team in the first team environment and playing some some games against good quality of opposition. So that's been a you know one of the positives from not having the situation we had we had last year. Yeah. It equally means we've been able to put more minutes into Phelpsy. Yeah, and you you've also I mean you could probably count on one hand the amount of games you've actually managed hashtag with a keeper on the bench probably, couldn't you? Yeah. It's not something traditionally. No, many it's not teams something. Do. No, there's a lot of teams that that, that don't. You, you're quite blessed, I, I suppose, if if you're able to to field a sub goalkeeper every week. Some managers choose to go with the extra outfield option anyway. So yeah, um, yeah there's always the risk that during an individual game it could cost you. But I think um, we don't have the privilege of seven or eight. Eight subs yet, do we? No, so. not yet, not yet. Uh, but yeah, those of you that watched last year, I'm sure you'd be happy to see James Philp, league and uh, promotion winner, is sticking around. Let's move into the defenders. There's a bit more movement there, starting off with the players that have moved on. Uh, Eli Benoit, again, league winner with us last year, been with us for a couple of years. Uh, Joe DeBell, he's a defender, also played in midfield, also played up front for us. We've seen him play many different positions, has also moved on. A word, I know it's been mentioned on social media already. It was quite early on in preseason we did that, but um, a word to those two. Both fantastic lads. Um, obviously, Joe barely featured in in the first team last year, and he, he was he was unfortunate um, that quite early on we 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 got up and running, um, and it was difficult for him to, to break in. And uh, he went out on a on a dual registration to to another team, Stanway Rovers. Uh, did well there. I was enjoying his time there, and then when we got promoted, it made it an even bigger ask for him to be able to secure regular football with us and it's the fair thing was to say to him look go and play regularly he's still a young lad I think 21 22 um so yeah he needs to be playing regularly and hopefully you know he'll get that and he'll give himself an opportunity to push himself back up you know the the, the ladder yeah and then Eli was was super patient I thought last year you know he did have a Limited role compared to Joe. Uh, sorry, not compared to Joe. He played a lot more than Joe, but he had a limited role compared to the other centre halves. But he did come in for some key games, didn't he? I'm thinking like both the lowest off games r- remind me of strong performances. The first one when he shaved his head, it was like a new man. I can't speak highly enough of Eli and the role that he played for us last season. Um, and we we spoke about it a lot, you know. And Essentially, he his words were, "I want to, I want to win the league. I want to, and he deserved to win the league because, the, as you say, you mentioned the two lowest off games. There were some other other big games where he made vital contributions. And I've said this in the past about players. Sometimes I'm I'm quite cruel with like the decisions that it's not a personal thing, but sometimes the decisions you make are cruel on on the yeah. individuals. And I part of my job, and it's the hardest part, is having to separate the personal from the the professional, if you like. And you have to make decisions that you don't. That not very kind to people, and Eli was probably, um, you know, one of one of three guys who I was particularly harsh on last year in terms of them being victims of my decisions. I yeah. think, uh, and but his attitude towards it, his understanding that he showed uh, was first class, and I'd be forever grateful for his contribution, as we all, all will. But 100%. certainly the way he handled um, the, the whole situation last year 
wish him nothing but the best and yeah, I know he'll be a huge asset to his new club. Is, is it Woodford, Woodford Town he's gone Town. to now? Yeah. yeah, obviously wish any of our exiting players the best. Um, and someone we haven't actually talked about yet is Harry Critchley. Big shout out to that man. He joined the club when we needed him just to reinforce the defence and help us get over the line in terms of promotion. Of course, we did just that. He's not going to be with us next season. He's actually going to stay in the Ishmael North with uh, a team that you'll see quite a few of our ex-players have headed to and we wish him all the best of luck. So let's talk about the lads who are staying in centre-half. Obviously, we have Harry Hayson, been a massive player for us over the last few years. Did miss a fair bit of football last year for mm. injury, but then still still played a decent amount. He played when he could, pretty much, because he's, he's that guy. Um, he scored a goal, actually, on, on our friendly last week against Haybridge. Um, Greg Halford sticking around. Yep. Um, one year older, but one more year experience. How much experience can this man get? It's like a couple of decades worth now. Uh, he's sticking around. Tom Anderson is staying around. And another person who's kind of, guess you could say, staying, but we haven't seen him play for a long time in the first team in a competitive game, Farai Singano as well. So those four all in the all squad. All four stay, yeah, which is, which is great. Um, I mean, we're heavy in that area, aren't we? We're blessed. We, we, and, you know, we, we speak about the guys that have just gone out and that, you know, some of the reasons are, are the, just how strong we are in terms of the competition. But it was shown last year we needed yeah. all of those guys um you know they all had periods where they were, were were missing for injury it's a long season it's a demanding season and yeah we're going to need that quality of depth yeah i mean that there's going to be a few headaches for you but i feel like centre half is going to be a real mm. Constant headache for you this year in terms of t uh, picking your team. If we move into fullback, obviously Matty Waldridge, more or less ever present for the last two seasons once he broke into the team. Uh, more minutes than anyone else last season. He's could become our most appearance, uh, well, the player with most appearances for hashtag ever this year if he plays a similar amount. Um, so And he's staying, which is great. Yeah, brilliant. We love um, Matty. Had a great season, Matt. A great, show great his TST. versatility in terms of being able to play, um, you know, left back or right back or centre forward when he's meant to be playing left back or yeah. right back. Um, and yeah, he's, he's handy at seven aside as well. Yeah, we learned that. We found out. Very good. Um, and then equally, someone who joined us, or two people that joined us actually midway through the season last year, Wine Reed and Nathan Smith. We could have put Nathan Smith down as a centre half as well as a left back. But um, yeah, both these guys sticking around. Yeah. And again, we, we talk about you know flexibility and versatility within the squad. You've got Nathan that can play. You know, left back, he was a sort of full back, but he's also a centre, you know, experienced at centre half. So that adds to, to more cover there. And why and someone who can play in the midfield area and, and yeah. you know, in wide, wide, wide positions. So, yeah, we've got good, good cover. And it's a nice balance, isn't it? Because I'm looking at the list, I'm looking at people like Greg Halford, obviously, uh, Wine Reed, who we signed from a high division, Nathan Smith, all played this level or a lot higher. But then equally, because of the nature of our club, we've got people like Matty Waldridge and Harry Haysom, uh, Farai, who's actually been with us since step six, coming up through as well. So we've got yeah. guys that have been on the journey with us and people that have joined us from higher leagues as experience and, uh, and and quality. And that's the balance the we look for. That's what we tried to, you know, we tried to add to the squad last year, that, that balance of youth and, and experience, and we're trying to continue with that. Yeah. And speaking of youth, someone we've seen feature in pre-season, Jamie Riley, um, the audience might not have seen a great deal of him because it's obviously been little bits of content here and there. We played against him last year for Coggershaw. Um, how's his pre-season been? Um, he's a young player we rate really highly. His pre-season has been a bit disrupted, unfortunately. He's picked up a couple of niggly injuries and and, uh, and had a, a family commitment abroad where, you know, that, that affected how, how much he was available. Um, so we, we're still kind of... It, we said earlier about things are not quite fixed, but we're still really talking with Jamie about where, where we're going to go. And hopefully it's something, you know, we can do something for sure, but nice. um, it probably needs a little bit more time in terms of him getting fit uh, okay. up to, up to where he, he, he would want to be in terms of his, his own condition. Okay. But right. yeah, very, very talent, talented lad. Good to know. Let's move on into midfield again, starting with the outs or the departures. Uh, again, most of these would have been publicized on our Instagram or Twitter or whatnot. But uh, some of them maybe newer information. Iman Akunja has moved on. He's gone back to the level we just won. He's, he's uh, joined Brighton C along with a couple of other ex hashtag players as well. Uh, can you tell us a bit about how that came about? Um, made an offer for Iman to stay. Um, we didn't didn't want Iman to go, uh, but he was made an offer that I think he you know felt was best for him, which you've got to to, to respect. Um, he was 
phenomenal for us last year in terms of his contribution, but equally might have looked at it and thought that he possibly didn't play as, as often as as he might have liked, you know, um, and whether he felt that that would would change going into into next season, it, it, you know, it was unsure because obviously you're looking to strengthen as you go as, as well. So, uh, and I think that coupled with the fact that he had a, a, a really good offer. And when I talk about really good offers, I don't always mean that, you know, it's the, these the things are financial. We talk in terms of um, the whole package in terms of what suits an individual and their, their, their lifestyle and, you know, their, their, their work, football, home balance. Yeah. So um, yeah, he was made a, a, an offer of, uh, um, from, from, Brightling C, who, you know, are, are a club that got relegated last year but will be looking to, to bounce back um, and he decided to take that. And, you know, we were we were straight with each other, you know, from, from early on and honest and that's all you can ask. And we He's that kind of guy, isn't he? The best. He's a great yeah. lad. You yeah, like he's fantastic. Lot. And he'll be, he'll be um, as big a miss off the pitch as he, as he will on it. Yeah. Sure. Wish you the best, E-Man. Um, sticking with centre midfielders, departures. Uh, Iola Adebayo didn't really feature last year, but was around the club. Yeah. What, what's happened So Iola, again, is a young player, needs to play regularly. Um, struggled with some injuries that prevented him getting those chances. And it's just, it's not fair to just keep players hanging around if they're not going to, going to play. He needs to go and, and, and get a season, you know, a 40-game season under yeah. his belt somewhere uh, that, allows him to continue to kind of develop and and get to grips with the change of moving from a from a professional academy environment to a to a part-time non-league environment where he's got to balance work commitments and and things like that as well so yeah very very um very good player um hugely huge potential mm. and hopefully he'll get some regular football and you know say climb back up the league yeah leagues. definitely Definitely. So wish you the best, Iola. Uh, one player I've seen mentioned in quite a few comments in preseason because he's actually known as a bit of a preseason king. Certainly was last year. That hasn't featured much for us this year. Yoni Vukaj. Can you tell us what's happened with Yoni? Yes. Yeah, so the situation with Yoni was that when I spoke to Yoni at the end of last season, again he kind of falls into the Eli bracket a little bit uh, in terms of the contribution that he made last year was vital, but maybe not probably at the, the early earlier part of the season yeah. as opposed to the latter part of the season and. You know, it's easy to lose someone's contribution because of recency bias, if you like. It was but sort of him and E Man in yeah, many ways, wasn't it? Yeah, was and he got really unlucky, Yoni, because he kind of he picked up a niggle or an illness, and E Man got in and took his chance and, yeah. and, and flew with it. So, um, but I did. I spoke to Yoni, and and there was Yoni has some ambitions or had some ambitions about potentially playing abroad. Yes, remember that? Yeah. Uh, he said that that was still a possibility that he would be looking to do that this this season. Um, in the close season, but if he didn't, he would return to us for pre-season and we would go from there. Um, the move abroad didn't materialise. He came in pre-season, but I had to be very honest with Yoni in terms of he missed a lot of football last year through no fault of his own. My fault, again, you know, that being cruel with people in terms of your decision-making. Uh, and what wouldn't have been right for me was to make Yoni false promises around how much game time he's yeah. likely to get this season. So I had to, you know, say that at the moment is how things stand. There are people ahead of you and it might benefit you more to get some regular football. Is at an age where he needs to be playing, you know, every week. He deser and, and, and he deserves to be playing Definitely. every week. He's too good a footballer to be, you know, on the fringes of our squads, if that make, makes sense. He'd be better off serving and somewhere somewhere else and getting, you know, good good amount of football. Uh, so he's went pre-season out to, to another step four club. That's not quite materialised for him. So he may still be around for us okay. within the next few. But again, um, never want to see him go. I could, you know, if I, if I was going to have my cake and eat it, he would stick around. Uh, but equally, I've got to be fair to him. I've yeah. got to be honest with him. And if I can help him, if we can help him as a club, find somewhere that's going to, give him the football that he deserves when we'll do that. But if not, we certainly won't be closing the door on him and he'll stay around around with us and we'll see what we can do for him. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Right. So uh, sticking in the centre mid uh, area, players that are sticking around, uh, captain Lewis Watson, 
didn't play as much football as he would have liked last year. Uh, lots of injury, well, a couple of different injury issues, but did finish strong yep. the season. And he's obviously been part of preseason as well, and he's staying, which is great. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's a shame for Lou that the season, just as he was getting going, the season was ending. It really, uh, I think that was a little frustration for him. He had a real tough year last year, and I think you've got to, you know, physically in terms of his injuries, but I think what it does to you, kind of emotionally and mentally as well it's really draining it's really difficult so you know credit for him to to for sticking through and coming through that difficult period as we know and people might forget lose had you know previous with with bad injuries yeah and in his recovery he's come back from that so every time you get that kind of physical setback it's not just you know it's not just your knee or your ankle that you know is suffering damage it's, mm. it's your well-being um so hopefully you'll have an injury-free season and, and, and be a big contrib um, contributor for us. Yeah, it'd be massive. And then the man who stepped in when Lewis was injured as captain last year and a massive impact, Max Cornhill. Um, big signing this time last year, 11 goals, nine assists. So that's 20 goal contributions. Uh, obviously played this level and higher. Not getting any younger, but still very, very fit. Probably one of the fittest members of the squad. Yeah, um, he was everything I expected him to be last season, I think. Other people that wouldn't have known about Max would have, would might have been slightly surprised by just how good he was for us. The big thing for for me with Max is is keeping him fit. Not because he when he's fit, as you say, he, he's in great condition, but because of his age, it's managing him. Because Max is not someone that will uh, will will hold back on himself. You know, he'll, he'll he will literally he will run through through brick walls for for people. We've seen him take um, several concussions. Well, I think he took one maybe in preseason again. Was well, it? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think we need to be allegedly. careful around concussions. Allegedly. They weren't actual concussions because no. we would have followed protocol. No, it but was he, but head he, collisions. But he, he is, uh, yeah, he does, he, he does get the odd whack on the head because he's he's brave. He puts his head there yeah. where other people won't. And uh, obviously popular with you guys as a signing last year because you guys voted for him as your sign or new signing of the season as well as the players loving him, as mm. players player. So very popular. Great that he's staying. Someone else is very popular. PK Humble um, got goal of the season last year and he's actually been continuing to score goals, not just in America, in TST, but uh, he scored a lovely goal against Worthing as well. Who is he popular with? Every, I think he's popular with everyone, isn't he? He is popular with He everyone. definitely is. People have opinions of him, whatever happens. Yeah. He doesn't go quietly, does he? Um, but we do <laughs> love PK. And he's, he, I think he's had a really good preseason. He looks ready to go. He's, um, yeah, he's, I think he won't mind me saying he looks like he's shed some of his pudding that he refers to. <laughs> um, and yeah, he's, he's, he's looked really good and, and he's got better as pre-season's gone on. So obviously we know about PK and, and his character and his personality. And I think, um, you know, having that around the place is, is, is vital. And yeah. But he also brings experience of the league that we're going into as well. So definitely, yeah, brilliant that he's staying, and I'm sure that everybody will continue to be entertained with his um, stupidity. <laughs> Let's hope this season starts slightly uh, better than the season started from last year as well. Individually with that red card, but I don't want to jinx it. Um, uh, yeah, I'll take the same start if it had the same ending. Yeah, that's true. I'll, I'll, I'll shake your hand on that right yeah. now. Right, we've got this far into the, the squad and we haven't actually talked about an incoming signing yet. No. Didn't really need to strengthen in defence. We talked about that. You had a lot of options there and we kept the lion's share of the defenders together. I think the big challenge this pre-season, as you'll know, has been keeping as many of the, the players, you know, at the club that we've wanted to keep. That uh, was our objective, wasn't it? I mean, he, when you're a league winning side, it's, yeah, from our, internally, we're like, okay, well, we love this squad, not just because they did well, because you have that harmony. And we went to America with a load of the boys and all these things. So, like, yeah, very much keep them together. But then equally, it's probably the hardest possible time to keep a team together because their their stock is never higher. Yeah. You know, other teams are going to approach them, want to maybe pay more than we might be prepared to pay them. Because, like the Saudis. Like the, well, Saudi oh, clubs at the moment. I mean, the Saudi, you joke about the Saudi clubs. Like, I actually have it on very good authority. One of our players was approached by a Saudi club. I'm not going to name the player. I'm not going to name the club, but I can tell you it's a top tier club. It's a club that many big names have gone to this summer. And one of our players was asked to go there last year. You, you're naive to think that you can go into a new season without strengthening. Yes. You can't just keep things the same. Um, for even if, you know, just for freshening up the, 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 the squad, the, the changing room, if you like, um, 
just to bring new energy. Uh, so it's important that you add. But I think for for us, for me certainly, it was key that we added where we needed to add. Yeah. But not over over overdoing it, not bringing too many too many in. So kind of. Um, not wanting to say quality over quantity because that's uh, not quite, but, you know, just being really careful with who we brought in. Stay in this area of the park, uh, new signing, someone who, from my perspective and what I've seen, think I think they'd be in the running for one of the players of preseason. Uh, obviously, maybe when you're a new player, you kind of stand out a bit more. But um, Sam Cornish, who is ex-Colchester United, was a player of the season for a team at this level last year. Um, he's been great and he's joined us as well. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's unfair. Your, your, I don't think your suggestion is unfair to make that, you know, in terms of how good he's been. Um, and come in and, 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 you know, backed himself, really. He, he, he could have, um, he he made contact, asked if he could come in and, and, you know, see where we could go with it. And he's he's been he's been brilliant and we're delighted to have, to have signed him. And he's still really young as well. Yeah. That's the thing. Which you wouldn't be able really, to know from watching him play. No, he think. doesn't play. You know, he, he plays. He's got a you know a, a, a mature head on him. Um, you can tell he's he's had a real good footballing upbringing. Um, and yeah, we're excited to have him have him with us and looking forward to to seeing more of him and helping him, him helping us improve and us helping him you know kick on again because he's still young enough to mm. to, to go on. Yeah, he really, yeah. I think he's still still only only twenty one, Sam. So a great, uh, you know, good experience for his age, but equally he's still got so much football ahead of him. What it does do as well is it gives us or me the opportunity to talk about the cornfield, which is the Sam Cornish Max Cornhill potential midfield partnership that becomes the cornfield. And what it does is it means that if you do go with the cornfield and you want to put someone ahead of them, you put PK in there, it becomes the Cornish pasty. Can I say that, PK? <laughs> The pudding. The Cornish pudding. The Cornish pudding. Done. Um, anyway, I don't mean that, PK. I literally just said that you look great, so don't be weird uh, about I think it. fine, I said that. Well, I, I said he, he <laughs> looks like he's ready to go, I think is my exact word. I said he'd lost his pudding. You're just giving it back to him. Yeah, but it's just a nickname and it doesn't mean anything. Um, <laughs> right. One more incoming player in this position, although it's probably not right to say he's a centre midfielder because I think he can play, from what I've seen, many positions, kind of in the Greg Halford mould, although a little bit more... Going forward, we've seen him play centre mid, we've seen him play out wide, we've seen him play left back, I think, as well. Misha Jamaili has joined. Tell me about him. Yeah, Misha. So Misha actually um, trained with us for, I'm not sure you even know this, a fair chunk of last season. He came in and trained with us because he was um, he was at university last year. And when he was back home, he would come in and train with us. Uh, he's got, uh, he's someone that um, a few of the boys know, he's kind of come up through, you know, in the, in the local area is someone who um, Joe Keefe has, has worked with previously when he was a, a young youngster. Uh, good experience, played played this level, so he's got good experience at this level. Again, young but with experience of of, um, of the Ishmael Premier League uh, and his versatility we talk about all the time. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. He, he can kind of cover... Um, to the extent what we need to find with Misha is where he's best suited within the way yeah. we play. Right. Um, and I think it's one of those, and I've said to him, he's, his versatility is a huge advantage to him, can sometimes be a little bit of a hindrance as well because, you know, you find that you're, you're not settled in, in, mm. in one position, but really, really nice lad. Great to have him on board. And to say we had him in last year and actually – spoke briefly with about when we were looking um when Ben Brooks moved on about whether he might be at our our opportunity to for cover at, at left back but he's he was playing down in in Brighton I think um because of his, his junior placement so it wasn't possible but he asked if he could come in pre-season once he you know he's moved back now he's finished uni asked if he could come in from pre-season we've gone from there he's done really well he's fitting really well with the group and yeah great to have him Perfect. Love to hear that. Um, we're going to move on to forwards now. By forwards, we kind of mean strikers, but also you're attacking wingers uh, and whatnot. Um, this is probably where we've had the most movement in terms of departures and additions as well, really. Uh, so a couple to talk about. The biggest one, I'd say, well, there's a couple big ones, but in terms of the ones that you guys want to hear about, I think uh, Jermaine Francis will be a, a big one because obviously he won two awards last year. He won fans player and managers player um, and 
it's pretty obvious to say that no team's going to want to lose that player. But equally, we all know how talented Jermaine is and we all know about his ambitions. So it's not it's not transpired that he's going to be with us next season. Can you give us a bit more info on that? Um, yeah, I mean, Jermaine made it, you know, fairly clear towards the end. You know, we've known Jermaine's ambitions. He wants to be a professional footballer and, and, and we don't want to be, no one wants to stand in the way of that. That said, we made him a, a, an offer to stay. This wasn't yep. a case of us not trying to keep Jermaine. I think we need to be clear, we, you know, with with our, our fan base that it wasn't a case of us just giving up on Jermaine and we made him an offer to stay in, in the hope that, you know, if something didn't work out for him that he would, you know, knew that there was still a home here for him where we felt that we could still provide that platform for him to to, to move on and move move up. So I don't I don't think it's a secret that, you know, he spent pre season at Barnet trying to to earn a full time deal. Um actually made an, a number of calls, myself and, and Joe to, to other clubs that you know, full time professional clubs, you know, urging them to take a look at him and, and take him in and because we do genuinely believe and we and you say, you know, we've got lads like Nathan Smith and Greg Halford who know what's yeah. you know, as players what's required to play in the football league and and they of the belief that he's you know capable of, of playing at, you know full time professional football. Um, and so it's worth saying at that point as well. That's obviously at a point when you know it's kind of been made apparent that he wasn't going to stay with us. But you're still not only trying to help him get that move, which you know is something we are proud of. You know, Jermaine's not the first and or won't be the last that we try and do that for. But also, you're putting your reputation on the line in a way because you might be talking to a club that you want to loan a player the other way from one day. You want to have a good relationship. So by you ringing a club and saying, look, you need to look at this guy, that speaks really highly to what you think of Jermaine, I think. I, I, I you don't think so. Be... For what we, you put it this way, we wouldn't be putting, picking the phone up to people or, 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 or about people we don't, don't have that belief in yeah. because, as you say, it is our reputation. Um, and I think possibly there's an issue around you know the physicality and his size and his appearance and the first thing i say to people is you need to look past that because mm. he's you know as 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 brave as any player i've, I've ever worked with uh, you know he, he will out jump people that are you know six foot three and beat them in the air he is his work rate is phenomenal we can't speak highly enough of him um we really hope that you know Really, I'm quite disappointed for him that he didn't get that opportunity at, at step one. Uh, I understand that he's got options at step two and he's looking at taking one of those, which I feel he he deserved a chance higher than. Mm. But equally, you know, that doesn't always, you know, it's my opinion isn't important in, in, in this situation because it's not our football club. So um, you've got to respect other people's decisions and, um, I'm you know, I'm confident that he will still fulfill his ambition yeah um, you know eventually but we, we wish we wish him all the best and uh yeah yeah well, sad um, to see him go but excited for his future exactly right and also you know we, we're not telling you where he's gone because we actually don't know the club that he's gonna 100 percent. no i think we, we 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 have um i think we have a, a, a fair idea but I don't think it's fair for us to be mentioned because that's Jermaine and the yes. n- whatever the new club is, that's their business. Yeah, it's not, you know, nothing's been announced. It, it, so it's, it's not, not our out business to the, make, no. Uh, whereas the fact that he was at Barney, I think is fairly common knowledge. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So so Jermaine's moved on. Um, Pedro Carvalho. Now, this was one that caught us a bit off guard, I think. Well, it did me, certainly. He was obviously with us in in America. Um, another really good year last year. Really important player for us. Uh, but he got a, a kind of... I would say it's a crazy offer because he, he isn't actually from England. He's an, someone from another country. He's Portuguese. But he got an offer to play uh, in in Luxembourg in a full-time club, top-tier club in Luxembourg. Um, and I was, listen, he's taking it. I and mean, We can't really no. hold that against him, can we? No. And brilliant, Pedro. Such a great lad to have about. Um, we wish him all the best. He's gone. I've said to him, if he, if he, he, you know, doesn't work out for him, please make sure that I'm the first phone call you make if you, if you decide to come back. Um, and if he hasn't lost his phone, <laughs> that might be the case. But yeah, we wish Pedro all, all the best. He's, he's got the opportunity of full time football. Yeah, phase. exactly. Yeah, we can't offer that right now. No. So, so listen, but that, that's... it is 
another it's an example of because I asked him about how the move come about and the amount of footage that they had to see of him playing for us. Yeah. Has helped him get that move. So So young you know, players out there kicking watching ourselves. I know there's you know, a lot of you out there watching, you ballers, you think, oh, should I go to hashtag? Well, we, we not, have previous of giving people opportunities. We're not necessarily helping ourselves, but we're but we're helping, and that's part of our job. It is part of our job, but you know how I look at it, particularly with this group of players and the lads that have moved on just this summer, you know, as much as you might want to keep Jermaine, you want to keep your Pedros, if they're moving up and they're going somewhere, full-time football, whatever it is, high levels, you know, the, the, the best case scenario in that instance is that when they were with you, they helped you achieve your target, Absolutely. and that's exactly what they did. Yeah. Our target last year was to try and get up the division. We did it. We exceeded really our, our expectations for the league last year, and those boys made that happen. So even if we never see the likes of Jermaine or Pedro or any of the lads that moved on in a hashtag shirt again, we will always be forever thankful for that role they played. And that's what I think you guys, I'm sure a lot of you do already, but as fans of hashtag, that is how you, sometimes you've got to try and remind yourself to be because we're a young club. You know, If you've been supporting another team for 20, 30 years or whatever they've been around for over 100 years you just expect this turnover and maybe it doesn't happen as much in the pro game because you've got longer contracts but with us it's really about supporting the people off the pitch as as much as the ones on the pitch and yeah you do find those special players that stay with you for a a load of years and we've got people like Harry Honesty in the Hall of Fame because of the contributions he made over subsequent seasons we've got people like Ross Glead over 100 games for the club you know like these are the it's a smaller number, but it's a really core number of people that have that long-term history of us. But even the ones that are only around for a bit, if they help us go up, that's amazing. Two other lads that helped us go up uh, last year that have moved on. First one being Kojo Penteng, um, who's gone to the same team as Eman Akunja, Brighton too. Yeah, and Harry Honest is there as well. Harry Honest is there as well. Obviously, yeah, he's had yeah, a year away from the club a, already, but there's a bit of a, a, bit of a hashtag, it's like yeah, the new Holbridge. No. <laughs> um, yeah, Kojo again, brilliant. Fantastic. Forever grateful for his contribution, but didn't get the football that he probably deserved last year. Um, probably would have moved on sooner if he wasn't in a position where we, we, we were going to be successful and he deserved to have a winner's medal around his neck at the end of the season. And I, and I think, I hope that, you know, he doesn't regret staying to, to, to get that. Um, but yeah, I say... As I all, great miss, a big, big miss. Wish him the best. Yep. And, uh, the other player I was uh, referring to there as well is Ollie Miles, who's also as one that we announced fairly early on in, in pre-season. Um, I think he's dropped down to Tilbury, who obviously got relegated, and he's part of the new look Tilbury team, which Page is also at, Yeah, um, to try and get him back in. Yeah, the, they've got a really strong squad to, to try and get back up. Um, they'll be disappointed that they went down last year, but they've... They look like they're, you know, set and ready to, to go next year. And Ollie was, again, another tough one. Young player. Uh, I didn't see that he would play as often as he would need to. His age and had to make a... And I made that decision as early as, as I possibly could to give him the chance to go and find, you know, yeah. for it to be out there so he could find another club soon enough. Um, but, yeah... Great lad. Lovely lad. Slight, just picked up a, a, a niggly injury that made it difficult for him. Um, and I had to wrestle whether I brought him back in for pre-season and, and kind of at that or whether I'd needed to follow an instinct, if you like, as to how much I thought he might might play. And yeah. he, again, at an age where he, he, he needs to be playing Regular, I can see him scoring a lot games. of goals for Tilbury in that league as I well. Hope, I, think I hope be... so because he's a he's a he's a really good lad and yeah and, and I, yeah um, it, it was a difficult decision to make. They're all difficult. They're all difficult. Um, let's talk about two more attacking players that are staying with the club. Toby Romelaren, nineteen assists last season. Uh, we didn't see loads of him in pre season. I think he came into it with an injury, but he's has featured in the last few games. But he's sticking around. That's good news. Yeah. Obviously, Tobes had, had a great season. He struggled pre-season with, with fitness injury-wise. Not sure how ready he'll be. Um, you know, for the, for the early part, we're going to clearly have to manage him quite carefully because what we don't want to do is is lose him for a longer period. But he, he's, he's working to, to strengthen that area with, with, with Tyler. And, yeah, the, the sooner we've got him fully fit the better yeah we know what a, a live and kicking Toby can do uh, AT Alex Teniola top goal scorer last year of 17 goals 
he is sticking around as well. Yeah, Alex is staying, which is great. Um, yeah, huge contribution last season. As you say, top goal scorer. And yeah, really pleased to have him stay. We want to see lots of this in the next few weeks, please. Um, but we have got some additions to talk about in this part of the pitch as well. Um, we announced, uh, I can't remember which one of these we announced first, actually, but as we just talked about AT as like an out-and-out striker, we signed another lad who, to be fair to him, actually can play in a few other positions as well. You've used him a little bit in some other positions in pre-season. I think I'm right in saying that uh, he was a centre mid earlier in his career as well, he told me. Um, but Suli Zudu has joined us. Uh, very interesting trajectory, this man, because... He scored 41 goals for Buckhurst Hill uh, a few seasons ago as a striker. That's a couple of divisions lower. But he then joined Brighton Sea Regent, who were in the division that we've just gone into at the back end of last year. And he got double figures, goals in about the same amount of appearances, which is pretty good considering they're a relegated team. Um, and I mean, he scored some a decent amount of goals in preseason, but some actually very nice goals. I'd say the one against Habers is the pick of the bunch that he did in the last game. Great control, dink to keeper, exciting player. Mm. Yeah, and as you say, he, he can be a nine. Um, he can play. It gives us the op- option of, of being a two if if that's the, how we choose to go. He can play in the ten. He, he's got experience of, of, of playing more than and and, and he's uh, you know slightly different player to AT. So you know it's not just a case of two players of the same kind of ilk, if you like. We it, it, we need we needed to be something different. We needed something. We need we needed there to be. A competition there for Alex. We needed to, to to strengthen that that department, if you like. Um, and as I saw, Sully was available. I, I, I tried to bring him in, and fortunately, agreed to come. Got the deal done. Um, and then another person we brought in who may well be a lot of people's favourite player they've watched in preseason so far. I know he's certainly uh, grabbed some headlines with some moves he's done. He's caught a couple of goals as well as kind of started to. And we shouldn't compare players too much, but in terms of the hole that was left by the likes of, of a Pedro or a Jermaine in those sort of attacking areas, Saka San has come in and he looks like a great, you know, not replacement, but addition to our club in the area we needed one. Yeah, obviously with Pedro and Jermaine and Kojo all leaving, it left us kind of a little bit light in the, in, in the wide areas. Um, and Sack, we kind of, we benefited from, if you like, the fact that uh, Sudbury were moved into a league. He had a fantastic season last year for Sudbury. Yeah. They, they were moved into a league, which meant there was significant more, significantly more travelling. Yeah, he's more local to us than 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 them. Um, so we've benefited from that and been able to to bring him in. Uh, I'll be, you know, I think there will clearly be comparisons made, but I think it's also important that we realise the the, the the play he, he is in, within in his own right, and yeah. that he's not going to do the things that Jermaine does, um, but he will do things slightly differently in his way and, uh, but will be, you know, can, can be as equally as, as, as effective for us, but it will, it will be in a different way. So we're really careful. Uh, we would be trying to be really careful not to kind of, you know, make that this is a direct, because he's not a direct no, replacement, not, no. but what he is, he's a, he's a fantastic replacement in the, in the area of the pitch that yeah. we're talking about. So yeah. Um, and still, Really young, so bright, young, f- bright future. Ahead internationally of him. capped yeah. as well, which is pretty cool. Actually, is the we had a, three different players play for hashtag with international caps. All of them play twice for their country. Simon Petty and Tom Williams both got two international caps for uh, Montserrat and Cyprus. Now, now Sack's got two international caps as well, but the difference with him is that he could He's add get more. <laughs> more. Yeah, exactly. The other boys came after those caps. Sack's very much at the beginning of his international journey. Two caps for Somalia. One goal as well. The only player we've ever had play for us who scored an international goal. That is very cool. Um, so we're really happy to have Sack. If you watched the last preseason video, we just seen like that really good goal that I mentioned uh, that uh, Suli scored against Haybridge. You would have also seen Sack pick up a red card. And in that video, we were all very nervous because we we weren't sure exactly what was going to happen with that red card with regards to it being a preseason game right before the season started. We hoped it wouldn't carry over, but we thought it might. The good news is, this is great news, and it's an exclusive. It hasn't carried over. He's not banned for league football. We've got a really tough start to the league, some would say, and the last thing we wanted was him missing one or even three games at the start of the season. Well, he doesn't miss any of them, so he's available for selection if the gaffer wants him. We're very happy about that. 
Um, drop a like in the video if you're happy about that as well. Yeah. One other player I want to talk about, or actually a couple other players, uh, Higgsy, Kieran Higgs. Some of you might even follow him on YouTube. He's a YouTuber as well as a footballer with a really interesting story. He's had a couple of terrible injuries coming out of academy football and actually a pro contract at Norwich. Um, played in and around this level before. Joined us for pre-seasons. Played quite a lot of minutes in pre-season, yeah. uh, but he, he's not signing. No, no. Kieran's not going to be signing for us. Um, difficult decision to make. Uh, and very, I've, I've been in communication with Kieran about this for, for the last, you know, two or three weeks uh, in terms of what my thoughts were around it. And, and he asked if he could stay a little bit longer and try and have, and it's been, I've been, it's very, it's important to get the balance right between giving someone enough minutes and time and opportunity, but equally letting them know when you know, yeah. that, so they've got time so that you're not leaving them in the lurch late on. Uh, and it might look like that's happened, but it, it hasn't. There's been communication throughout w w with me and Kieran. Um, and there's a few factors that come into it. One, one is that he, he lives a reasonable distance away from us at the moment. And that wasn't going to be a barrier to him. But when I'm thinking about moving forward and uh, how much game time he was likely to get, I had to be fair with that. The other thing is he's come back from two horrific injuries. I think what he's done, you know, obviously I've, I've seen his, the stuff he does and I know he's got lots of followers that will be following his journey. I think it's quite um, quite phenomenal. The, 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 the dedication, the willpower, he's as really, right, he's a professional lad. He looks after himself. He's a fantastic person. There's no, you know, um, he's really kind of well-grounded, down-to-earth lad. Uh, but he coming back off those he needs to be playing somewhere where he's he's going to probably be getting more game time than he was likely to get with us now that might be a decision that i end up regretting later on um but you have to make these decisions at at, at the point of time that you you're making them so uh, wish him the very best you know um, hopefully if he needs my help to to get somewhere else he, he, you know certainly uh, if anyone picks the phone up and asks me about him, I'll have nothing but good to say. Yeah. Um, but just not quite the right thing for us at this time, I would, yeah. I would say, which is which is unfortunate. And um, but again, have to make. Yeah, that is that is the job of football manager. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, I want to talk about Chandler Ray, who's a name that people probably wouldn't have been familiar with because he'd been playing in our development team, at least on YouTube, um, last year. And it's, again, a really a great advertisement of our, our, not just our reserve team, but our development team, which is you know, another senior team we have in men's football, uh, who got another promotion, by the way. They're fourth in as many years, which is unbelievable. Uh, he was a strong player for them, and he's actually featured a fair bit in preseason. Yeah, yeah. How have you, have you made his, what have you made of so, it? So, um, Chaz has done really well. Um Huge jump from in terms of the, the level he's been used to playing at. And, and probably at this given time, it's a little bit too big of a jump for him, but he's still, he's only a young player. So what we're going to do with Chaz, hopefully, is try and find him some some senior football on a kind of dual registration basis that keeps him uh, around us, but allows him to get that experience and, you know, and hopefully will feature for us in the future so yeah um but we've had a few you know so we spoke about Fletcher earlier we had a Mecca who's only 17 yeah who did some pre-season and, play, and played a, a couple of games in in the reserves for us so there's a lot of stuff cooking in the background you don't yeah, always see guys you know we've obviously we've we've appointed a new reserve team manager in in, in Billy who's, yep. who's bringing you know some some more young players so, so quite a few of them so, featuring so, as White Ensign didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah I think we have three or four feature against White Ensign which you know 18 17 18 year olds getting good experience but equally for our kind of our our members that are watching this they'll see some new faces in the reserve setup yeah. young young know, young players that they can you know hopefully get get excited about and hopefully we'll get some that push through to feature in the first team like we had with Josh Taylor last year. Yeah, shout out to Dennis Simpson as well, manager of the development team for getting that promotion. And I mean, I, I was at the Worthing game seeing China come off the bench. I was like, it's pretty cool because I was at the game when the guys clinched promotion on a, in a park, basically. Then I'm not taking anything away from park football. It's just, I watched that game and I saw a lot of boys play well that game, but Chad being one of them. And then I'll, 
only about six weeks later, maybe I was watching him yeah. come up against Worthing. Yeah, uh, who, were, who just he, missed got out in the playoffs in the National yeah. League. Yeah, and that, and I think they just say, and that's credit to to Dennis and Craig and 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 the work that they're doing and the fact that you know coming and Dennis phoned me and said, look, Chaz has done really well, and I think you need to to take a look at him, and we did that, and he's 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 done he's done well, yeah. not quite ready, but. There's definitely a player there. That's what, and that's what the the sort of structure is all about as yeah. well. Okay, so that kind of concludes the squad update for now. You know, like we said at the start of the video, things will change. There's a couple of things I want to talk about before we go, though, Devs, and that's just kind of a little preview of the season or the start of the season ahead. So I mentioned a couple of times we think we've got a fairly tough start, and the reason I say that is we start off with uh, Dulwich Hamlet at home. Dulwich Hamlet, a massive club, uh, obviously relegated club from National League South. We then follow that up a couple of days later with a local derby against Concord Rangers, also a relegated club from National League South. So our first two games are from teams that have come down from, that was two divisions above where we were playing last year. And then just after that, we have our longest possible away trip to Bognor Regis. So, I mean, what do you think? Is that a difficult start? Yes, tough start. But I think whatever start we'd get would, would be tough. Um, we know a fair bit about the league, but equally, we you know, as, as a... As a as a club, we're going into the unknown. Yeah, um, we're the new boys again, so that's something else that you know we'll be experiencing. We, we've had it seems like every two years. I think yeah, <laughs> that second that year, it's nice when teams have played against you before because you don't feel so much like they're. You feel like they're a bit bored of you. <laughs> yeah, well, kind of like I think it's a little bit patronising for us to say what we've always said at lower levels, which is everyone raises their game against hashtag because this is a proper level of football now, and like these guys should be playing their best regardless. You know, I think we saw in earlier divisions things like when you do have say a step six, step five league, there might be players that take holidays and miss certain games, and they'd never want to miss the hashtag game because of the YouTube element and all that. I think we're now at a level where most games are filmed. Yeah, ours are yeah. probably going to get the most eyeballs, but and I still think people are going to want to beat us. And I do think that is magnified when you're new to a league, which we are again, because it's like, oh, who are these hashtag boys? We've not played them before. Let's see what they're all about sort of thing. But I also think, you know, we just can't expect any easy games. And that's one thing a lot of people say about this league particular is that like in other leagues, maybe there's a couple of teams you'll look at and think, right, we really should be getting three points here. Whereas this year it feels a bit more like there's no give, there's no free hits. I mean, what we have to go, we go in there and, and understand that we belong there. Yeah, you know we've earned our place in that league. Last season we earned that place. We'll take some inspiration from from Averley and, and Canvey and what they yeah. did last year going up. But equally, we won't expect to do what Averley and Canvey did. That's not just that. It's, that that's you know, that's not given. It could be misleading. It's very misleading to suggest that there's not a big difference in the two divisions mm. because of what Averley and Canvey did last year. I think we have to give them the credit they deserve rather than underplay the toughness of the of the league yeah um and some huge clubs well-established clubs um it's going to be fun Hornchurch, another big team in this league it's a new local derby for us we've never play our finalists last two two years yep and they've got some they've got a player you know very well sam higgins striker tends to score a lot of goals he was at east Surrey with you guys um we have played against them before but not competitively no. um and that's very local to us uh lewis is a big club. Um, obviously got a great women set up as well. Um, there's actually a couple of teams that we're in both leagues with this yeah. year. Billericay, which is a big local derby, I would suggest. Um, very close to us, very close to our youth facility. Uh, we've uh, we've played them in the men's football before in the Essex Cup. We lost, I think it was 1-0 that mm -hmm. game. It was actually a pretty impressive performance from us. And that was when we were in lower level um, and they were in a high level. They were National League South at the time. We're now at the same level, but our women are also at the same level. And there's a, that's one of the reasons I talk about it as a rivalry because that has been a genuine rivalry when they beat us to promotion season before last. We've now caught up and we're in the same league. So four games minimum, a league game against Billy Ricky this year, two on the men, two on the women's side. And an FA Youth Cup. And an FA Youth Cup as well. That's, I forgot, so it's five actually. Yeah. It's five games against Billy Ricky and that's really local to us. And then we've also got uh, Chatham we're in both our leagues and that's partly due to a rebrand. So Chatham also got promoted on the men's side. I'm, I'm under the impression they have a very strong fan base mm. as well. But then also there's been a rebrand of the women's Gillingham team who have become Chatham. So we're actually in Chatham's leagues in two different divisions, which is very interesting. Uh, and we've mentioned Bognor Regis away. We've got Margate away. We've got much more sort of Kent, Sussex, bit of London and obviously Essex. No more Norfolk and Suffolk trips. No. So if you're from Norfolk and Suffolk and you didn't come and see us, 
you need to do a bit of traveling if you want to see us this year. But equally, if you're from Sussex and you're from Kent and these sorts of areas, get involved. We're coming to your area. Um, but yeah, I mean, we don't necessarily ever sit down and say, oh, you know, this is our ambition for the, the season. We need to do this. We need to do that. But what do you expect? You have to tell us like, you know, where you think we're going to finish. But what do you, how do you think our boys will do? The squad that we've kept is one thing saying, if we'd have gone into this year with the exact squad that won us the league last year, but it's never the case. It's a few changes. You've made some really good signings, I think. We've also lost a few. Where do you think that puts us? I think that we'll always back ourselves. I think that's important. Um, I think we'll we'll, we'll compete. Uh, Where we'll finish, I don't know. I couldn't have told you last year where we would have finished. Um, But we'll be aiming for the same, same outcomes in terms of game by game, week by week. We'll be trying to win football matches. (laughs) <laughs> and if you do that every week, then you know that that you end up kind of top of the pile. And I'm not suggesting for a minute that that's that's what it's going to be. But I often hear people say, and it kind of that doesn't irritate me, but I think it's easy to people refer to um, our first season in the Ishmael North as we didn't try to win the league. No, we we did. We tried to win, like we still try to win every game. Whatever league we're in, wherever we've always tried to win as many games as possible. Um, what we weren't necessarily expectant of of being up there in the first year, but when people say, "Oh, you didn't, you didn't even try," like we missed out on the playoffs by two weeks, ten days, I think. Yeah. And, you know, we were in the in the race for the playoffs that that late. Um, so I don't think any team goes into a league not trying no to I, think, I think I think the game. comments more based on a financial one which yeah, is you know but that yeah, and that all... has jumped up as well again you have yeah. to be realistic about these things you know like we we, but, we, but we finan- knew a lot but, of money but financially last year you could have easily said we weren't trying to win the league if, no of course if, if, you know the, the game yeah. isn't played on a balance sheet financially we've never no. tried to win the league no but so, by that we mean financially we've never been the highest spenders um which is news to a lot of people, even though we keep telling everyone, you know, and that is again why it becomes challenging. If we were the highest spenders, you know, only players we'd ever lose would be players that go professional, go up. But it doesn't work like that. Players do move on because there's more money elsewhere sometimes. And likewise, you know, we have to play to our strengths and we've talked about what they are and we have, we're a great platform for players. But um, we also have a really good club to be at and almost no one that I know of ever leaves with bad things to say about our club and that's not an accident. It's because we create a certain environment. So, yeah, I mean, I think when we joined the league below, we did this squad update then oh. two years ago and we talked, but we tried to sort of explain to our audience, you know, the, you can't the, the just go up. straight to the top of the tree at yeah. every single jump and that, yeah, that would always be the case. And what we have to prepare ourselves is, and we had, we had this issue, I think, a kind of a, a threat of the players in one of our pre-season games. Like you clearly, we we got used to not getting beat, mm. and we have to understand. And the audience I've done, we left, and I left because I'm the worst in the world when it comes to to, to losing. You know, it, it, it might you might not see it externally, but internally, it's kind of eats or eats away. But everybody in football's is is the same. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it, would we? <laughs> you, no, don't, of course. you don't take part to to kind of suck us for pain. Yeah, no, nobody nobody goes into this thinking, oh, well, it'd be quite nice if we lost today. You know, yeah. It's just it's horrific. But um, you you can't just we might get hiding. We might get a couple of hidings this season. We might go. We might hammer another side, but none of it means that it's going to be easier or, or harder. Again, as we talk earlier about inspiration from from Averley and, and Canvey, but Averley lost one of their opening fixtures last year by six yeah. and still managed to find a way to get promoted. Well, I think know, back to that, that Canvey 4-0 defeat, I think I think we learned a lot in that game. Felix, though, last year, we got hammered 4-0. Yes, great shout. You know, yeah. and we still... So we just have to... It's not about getting beat. It's about reacting how you react to getting beat. Mm. And, and the important thing for me is that and and as I say me when I when I say me I mean like Joe and Larry and Paul and like my my whole like staff is that we don't lose sight of 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 the bigger picture and get too mm, the journey, down yeah. by a defeat or too high by a victory. I think it's the people same stuff. know that I don't get too high by a win because I'm kind kind of quite boring in my kind of repetition of let's not get carried away type, but. Equally, I won't be getting too 
disheartened if we if we lose two or three. We're, we've not experienced yet, I don't think, a run of you know real bad run of mm. results. They will happen at some point in our on our journey. And that doesn't mean that we won't recover and and grow stronger from it. It will happen. Exactly, it will happen. And we're saying a lot of the same things we've always said because we have the same philosophy regardless of what league you're in really and like it's the same people ultimately involved that have, you've been watching for a long time now and that's kind of my final question for you devs is you know five years into your tenure here at hashtag we've come through a lot of leagues we're now at a league that you are very familiar with in terms of it's where you spend a lot of your time you know you do know the leagues we've been in before as well and you know higher but this is a league we aimed to get in i certainly did i sort of said this is where i want to be i talked about it a five-year plan three promotions in five years you could argue we did four and four, actually, if you include the women's promotion and the COVID thing. So we definitely over-delivered. Are you just as excited as you were the day before the third loan? Are you more excited? Are you less excited? Can't you tell? I can't. No, I actually can't. I'm always excited. <laughs> Nervous? No. Okay. No, not yet. I will be Saturday morning. Yeah, that's I the mean, thing. You, won't want, you wouldn't want to be in my house Saturday morning. It's Ellis, I feel sorry for us to share all the car journeys you, with you. I, yeah, you. Yeah, you might want to get, in, get him on one day <laughs> just explain just how horrific it is. He, when he was little, he used to, I would get, if we got beat, he'd sit in the car and actually apologise to me. <laughs> <laughs> and why are you saying sorry? Well, I feel like it's my fault. <laughs> it's like, because it's just, and I, and I, 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 don't, I, I know it, but I don't know it. And, and I know that Saturdays, and I'm sure, you know, um, my wife and you know Ellis' sister will, will equally say like, "Oh my God, football's back!" But yeah, there's nothing like it, is there? Nothing like it. There's nothing like it, guys. It is close. We hope the weather improves here, and we have that beautiful first day of the season. Sun is shining. Excitement. You just don't know what to expect. You could get battered. You could win every game. Anything can happen. It is football, and it starts again for us in a few days' time. And it starts with a big game. Dulwich Hamlet, get excited. What I promise is we will give our best. Of course. Even if it doesn't look like it, I can guarantee we're not a group of people. I'm talking about the players that we've, we've got. We know, I know the, I'm confident in, in the group of players we've got. I know them well enough that we are not a group of people that will not give our best. We won't always be at our best, but we demand that we give our best. And that's, you know, I think that's that's our minimum. That's what's got us, you know, that's what stood us in good stead so far. We've done all right. We've got no intention from from changing from it. That is the hashtag way. Let us know in the comments below where you think we're going to finish in our maiden voyage in the good ship Ishmian Premier Division. Let us know how you think we're going to get on in our opening games. Of course, drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. If you want to help us do better on the pitch, become a member. The money goes to the club and we can improve together and you get loads of great benefits like watching games live or as live like watching reserve games women's games loads of stuff that the non-members don't get to see including full 90 minutes all the links you need are in the description below me right now and i look forward to seeing you for another journey another hashtag united season thank you to you des best of luck to you and your staff let's be having you up the tags